Most murders in Australia are committed by men, but one in five are by women. What turns a wife, mother or daughter into a killer? So I started thinking, did I do this? Um, and then I go, no, I couldn't do that. Did someone I know do this? It was quite gruesome, what she'd done. You think I left the motel or come back and chop in? Like, give me one good reason why I would want to kill my own mother. It's incredibly hard, if not impossible, to predict. What makes a woman kill? It's a question we've been asking ourselves after a series of high-profile homicide cases where women have been convicted of some of the most sickening crimes you'll ever see. Lindy Williams murdered her partner, George Gerbic, and nearly got away with it. For 10 months, police couldn't even identify his body. All they had was a torso found on fire beside a quiet country road. We were able to say it was a male torso. We were able to say it was Caucasian, European. We didn't have a lot to go for from there. Detective Inspector Damien Hansen is in charge of the Queensland Police Homicide Group. They released this video showing vaccination marks and a small scar, hoping to find someone who knew him. Then, forensic investigators identified two substances, quinine found in tonic water and herbisartan, a common blood pressure medication. Detectives searched pharmacy databases to identify people who'd stopped getting that medication. They then had to door knock thousands of homes of potential victims before eventually arriving at George Gerbic's house. It was one, uh, one Saturday night that uh, the, the staff knocked on the right door um, and uh, they spoke to Lindy and uh, she advised that he was overseas. A few checks later they were able to show that he hadn't in fact left the country. Lindy Williams had been sending emails to George's family saying that he was away overseas, tricking them into thinking he was alive. When interviewed by police, she tried to come up with a believable story of how George died. And he just started to lunge at me with the knife. He cut me on the neck. I put my both hands up. She says she defended herself with a stool while her own injury was bleeding. Yeah, there's a whole lot of blood here and he slips and then falls back. I don't know where he hit his head, but I heard a bang. If she dialed triple zero right there, then maybe police might have believed her. But it's here that her story descends into a horror movie. And what was just here? George, the top part. The top part of George. In a plastic, wrapped in a plastic. Lindy Williams tells police she left the house in fear and when she returned three days later, George Gerbic had been dismembered. If you believe her version that someone's obviously broken into the house, killed him, cut him up, um, and then wrapped a torso and left it there, so, you know, it's, it's just not plausible for us. I was going to ring the police, and then I thought that the whole thing that I did that, and I was that really frightened me because that's a really horrible thing that anyone could do to another human being, whether they're dead or alive. But police were able to prove this 60-year-old mother did that horrible thing herself, even finding the power saw she bought from Bunnings to use in her unspeakable crime. What goes through someone's mind to be able to do that and, uh, you know, just thought of doing it, um, it's... Yeah, inhumane. How big of a shock was it to see anyone do that, let alone a woman? It was a shock, um, especially if you saw her in person, to think that she's killed this man and then she's just cut him up with a saw. There's no reason why women couldn't be as effective, if not more effective, than uh, men in, in killing another person. Dr Julian Parmigiani is a forensic psychiatrist who is regularly tasked with getting inside the mind of violent offenders including female killers. They, generally the victims of violence and sometimes they uh, take a preemptive strike because they know that uh, their partner is just about to kill them. That's true for some, but certainly not all. Dr Samara McFedrin heads up the Homicide Research Unit at Griffith University. She says the latest data reveals males commit 80% of homicides and females 20%. The statistics are very, very clear, but the story about why those statistics 
are the way they are is very unclear. Brisbane mother Katie Ann Castell killed her husband Jared in their kitchen during an unprovoked attack after he got home from work late. The graphic designer was charged with murder but pleaded guilty to manslaughter. She threw a large knife at Jared which pierced his heart, killing him in front of their four-year-old son. We have a grandson now that we've got to protect. It doesn't end today, unfortunately, for us. Jared's father, Tony, spoke outside court about the need to reduce domestic violence in all its forms. The impression is that, that it is men beating uh, a woman. It goes the other way as well, you know, and it doesn't matter the gender. We've just got to protect our people in this country. For the purpose of the recording, can I get you to state your full and correct name, please? Simona Zaborowska. And then there's the case of Simona Zafarovska, a teaching student convicted last month of murdering her mother, Radhika. Thank you, police emergency. She'd initially called police claiming an intruder was in their home. But detectives would later find the murder weapon inside her bedroom. So, Simona, I must tell you now that you're now under arrest for the murder of your mother. But I haven't killed my mum. Like, how can you... I haven't killed her. Why would I want to kill my mum? Like, give me one good reason why I would want to kill my own mother. Police had found several reasons, mostly financial. With her mother gone, Simona could quit university, move overseas to be with her boyfriend, and rent out the house that her mother had transferred into her name. This is a decking board that's covered in your mother's blood that's located in your bedroom. I told you that had nothing to do with it. Explain why it's there. I don't know. I don't know. Are there any aspects that set apart a male killer from a female killer? None at all. Um, people kill each other for the same reasons. It's it's. Uh, financial, it's um, relationships or, or during crime. Am I going to go to jail tonight? Katie Ann Castell was given nine years jail for killing her husband. Simona Zafarovska was sentenced to life in prison for murdering her mother. She has lodged an appeal.